two assumptions with trusses. Like we talked about before, all the joints are pinned. There's no moment transfer, it's just a bunch of pinned, pinned joints. All the truss pro or, uh, problems that you see in there will have pin joints. The other thing they'll have is loads at the joints. You won't see loads between the joints because it turns into a much more difficult problem. So loads at the joints and pin joints. The very first thing we want to do is what? It's right here in front of you. Free body diagram. So let's go back and let's draw out a little truss and talk about this thing for a while. I'm gonna I'm gonna hang this hang this thousand pounds here, but it really could be uh, really could be here, it could be there, it could be at any one of these any one of these joints. Spanning from here to there, what's the first thing we're gonna do? I want this reaction right here. That's what the question's asking for. What's that? It's the very first thing I do. Always get rid of them. Place them. So I've kind of already got that one started. Okay. Does it matter when they when they, they give me this problem? Does it matter? Do these horizontal or do these diagonal members matter if all they're looking for is this? What if the truss looked like that? Would it make a difference here? What if the truss looked like this? Would it make any difference? What if it had all kinds of things going on? What if it was totally solid? It really doesn't matter. The size and shape, if they're only looking for the reactions, or if your first step in the process is to find the reactions, the geometry inside really doesn't matter. Do the same thing with a truss that's hanging from a wall. So I've got a little uh, joint there, joint there, this could have whatever you want on it, a thousand, whoops, a thousand pounds coming down. Does it matter that this guy is here? If I'm looking for, they're asking me, well, what's this reaction here? Doesn't matter if this is there, doesn't matter if that's there, doesn't matter if there's verticals here, doesn't matter what's going on inside this guy. We're breaking this thing free from reality, and that's the first step that we do. It's just break this thing completely free of reality, find these reactions, and then start solving inside. What what I found is that they'll start asking questions like back up a lot of steps here. So we're going to use this one for a couple of things. <coughs> what I see a lot of times is they'll ask you for, okay, given this truss with this loading, what's the load in this member here? And let's say there's a load there, there's some reaction going on over here. What my, what I've seen people try to do is immediately go from this load and try to figure out, well, some of it goes here and some of it goes there and some of it goes there and some of it goes there. So that much be that must be how much load goes in there. You've got to break the truss free first. You've got to replace the supports. Got to put those reactions in there first, and then you can start talking intelligently about what's going on inside. So I think that's really the point that I'm trying to make is, even though you've got this big complicated truss, you really have to do those reactions first. You have to solve that free body diagram first, and then start working inside. I've seen a lot of people say, well, I don't care what this reaction is over here. I just think that this load's going to go over and do this. You got to start here and then start working your way inside 
to figure out what those loads are. 